just want to make sure it was the right height for everyone. <laughs> um, so first I would like to thank my mother and my father for giving me the courage to dream. Um, so in 1951, Langston Hughes asked us, what happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over it like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load or does it explode? In 1963, Martin Luther King Jr. elaborated on that dream, hoping that one day we will all be able to hold hands and live together in equality. And in 2016, I watched that dream defer. I watched that dream defer in my residence hall at the University of Louisville, where there were multiple instances of white students telling students of color that their scholarships are unfair and that they don't deserve to be here. I watched that dream defer as another student called me a liar, hypocrite, and discriminator in front of the entire dorm when there was a sensitivity training session attempting to correct these offenses. And I watched that dream defer as a calm conversation from months ago turned into an accusation of demonization, and I was placed in a position where speaking out against these accusations affirms the narratives against me as an angry black male, and my silence only allows for these actions of exclusion and discrimination to continue to flow through the place I call my home. And this dream is not only deferred in the place where I'm supposed to find comfort either. We find that situations like these are reflective of this country, where we can't voice our pains, but our silence only allows for these pains to grow and continue. In 1968, Dr. King warned us of an other America, one that has, in the words of Dr. King, a daily ugliness about it that transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. We see this dream defer as this other America rears its ugly head, most glaringly in the criminal justice system. We see the dream defer as this other America influences the way in which people like me are perceived to the point where we as a nation find ourselves justifying putting two bullets into the chest of a 12-year-old boy that looks like a threat, or believing Darren Wilson when he describes Michael Brown as a 600-pound behemoth ready to take his life, or remaining silent when eight bullets are put into the back of Walter Scott because he ran. And the criminalization of the black man runs deeper than just a few police officers in a few distant states. We see it at home in response to the Mall St. Matthews riots that were simply created more obstacles for people who look like me when in the mall, as I find myself being stopped on multiple occasions when I simply want to do a little shopping. I saw this dream defer, dry up like a raisin in the sun, as the incarceration rate for African Americans skyrocketed and our voice became silenced as it was explained away as just the way things are coupled with the disenfranchisement laws that silence us further as our voting power and our political power is removed. I saw this dream fester and then run over as this other America permeated into the courtroom. As a community, we saw Judge Olu Stevens get dismissed from multiple court cases simply for criticizing the predominantly white juries that are consistently called upon in the courtroom, which skews the already unbalanced scales of justice. We find our voices silenced once again as indicting this system of injustice only pushes us further from the tools to make a difference. I felt this dream defer as it sags down like a heavy load. And this fatigue comes over me as I, it can feel like there's nothing that can be done to even acknowledge this other America. And this fatigue has only deferred the dream further as it has created silence and complacency. Yet, despite all of this, despite all the fatigue and despite the illusion of futility, we cannot defer this dream any longer. The time is now to stop sitting by and, let this dream, and letting this dream defer and make it a reality. This is where we see the dream explode. As social media blew up in the past decade, so has our dream. And it has expanded our dream uh, to, and given us a platform that we cannot be shut out of. And it has created a frame for which to move forward. I've seen people come together as ideas are shared back and forth across hashtags and statuses. As more information is spread across this nation, we will begin to find our voice in this movement. I've seen all people become more and more vocal as they formulate their own ideas and share them across the web. And I've been able to not only tap into but contribute my own ever-growing stream of inspiration as I am able to articulate and share my own opinions. For example, last semester I wrote a Facebook post addressing a few of the outlying criticisms of minority scholarships. And aside from the over 300 people that read it, I know that more people will be able to see it and draw inspiration from it as it was shared across the web. Our voice has gotten louder, stronger, and more developed than ever. What's more, I'm seeing the dis beginning of this dis dismantling of this other America as news outlets of information are opened up. 
We are now exposed to the truths outside of what the news might tell us. For instance, I was able to see the unity in the peaceful protests that occurred in response to Michael Brown's death. What I witnessed very greatly from the violent riots that are being reported by the media. And I've seen the wealth of contributions to, towards a counter narrative that combats the mainstream assumptions about what we are taught about African Americans. Now, I'm not going to say that social media has been perfect in helping us realize this dream. It has provided a persistent stream of discouragement, as I often find myself facing multiple tragic events in succession, and sometimes I feel a surge of loneliness, like I cannot make a difference in this country. But this is no reason to give up. We must continue to dream and to speak in the face of this discouragement. We must persist in making this dream a reality. However, the dream will not be realized by just sitting at the computer and typing down thoughts. It demands for all of us to take this dream wherever we go. It requires students like me to impeach the actions of the faculty when they are in the wrong, and, it, and to create discourse that works towards creating an inclusive environment on college campuses everywhere. It requires police officials to actively work towards ending profiling and restructuring the way that police interact with people of color to diffuse the situation instead of escalate it. It requires us to speak louder than our skin color, to work towards ending a criminalization that we as a people have faced. It requires people like Judge Olu Stevens to continue to advocate for more people of color on jury panels and for us to stand with him and advocate. It requires all of us to recognize these disparities, not just within the criminal justice system, but within society as a whole, and to criticize those disparities and to take those criticisms with us in every facet of our daily lives. Our collective reserve has allowed for these systems of pain to silence, marginalize, and expand for too long. We must carry our dream together and use our voice wherever we can to not only make these systems known, but construct a new reality, one of tolerance, one of acceptance, one where we can all feel like we belong. Dr. King once said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands at moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at the times of challenge and controversy. Now is the time of challenge and controversy. And now is the time for us to walk together, speak together, and stand together in unity to tear down these societal pacifiers and construct a world of tolerance, acceptance, and inclusiveness. And that is how we make this dream country. All right, thank you.